What you think? If you're talking, you gotta unmute yourself. Willa, were you talking? Okay, I was I was reading. Okay, go ahead. Start over. Start. So you want me to start with verse 21 and read that one? Oh, which oh, one are you feeling most like today? That's what you're doing? Oh, so the one I'm feeling most like is. I'm sorry, what verse were we going up to, Jag Dagny? Was it 25? I thought so. Anybody got a 21, 21 through 25? 21 yeah, 21 through 25. 25. Mm -hmm. So who's got a feeling? Who's who's got who's feeling which one they're feeling today? And it can be any of them, not just 21 through 25. I, I can tell you which one I want to feel like. Okay. <laughs> Number uh, 25, she is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. Amen. Yes. That really spoke to me and uh, given me a sense of empowerment that, yes, yes, yes I can. Yes, yes you can. Yes, Absolutely. I'm going to pull up the Bible Gateway so we can look at it in a couple of uh, versions. So Proverbs 31, 21 through 25, NIV, and... Add parallel, add parallel, and one more. Okay. Let me share my screen since y'all are being shy today. That's okay. We're going to get into this word and y'all going to, y'all going to perk up. It's okay. Okay. So let's start with verse 21 then. NIV says, when it snows, she has no fear for her household for all of them are clothed in scarlet. That's NIV. New Living says she has no fear of winter for her household, for everyone has warm clothes. And King James, she is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her households are clothed with, scar with scarlet. So let's talk about 21. What are y'all feeling about 21? It sounds like she is prepared, like she's made preparations. For that season to come. Mm -hmm. She went to Burlington yeah. and got coats back when it was hot and on sale. <laughs> right. <laughs> what else do y'all see in there? I look at, at winter as a, I don't know, winter as a a season of yeah. distress, maybe, mm -hmm. and not just winter being cold, but things that you are going through mm -hmm. that can make you feel mm -hmm. like it's winter all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how I looked at it. To and me, sometimes winter is, is although she although she's going through that, she knows where her help is coming from. Mm -hmm. and what she needs to do. That's good, Neva. That's good. Um, a lot of times when I think about winter in, in juxtaposition to the other seasons, I think of dead, like that that's when things die and then spring, which comes behind winter, that's when things come alive, when they grow again. And so, um, and so I'm even thinking about the sheep of pears for when they don't have. So not just clothes, but you know, not just, you know what I'm saying? She's already put things away 
like a like an ant, you know, she's already stored so that over the over the winter months, even though they're clothed in scarlet, they ain't wanting for nothing. You know what I'm saying? They're not going without, but she's ready either way. And so I like that um that that piece right there too, what you said, Neva. What else y'all see before I read um what I had wrote together for a few weeks ago? Willa, your uh your 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 internet is slowing up. Um like it's not coming through. Turn your camera off and see if that makes you go a little faster, if that makes your voice get in line. Willa, can you hear me? Willa, can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So Willa, your internet seems to be having some problems. So I turned the camera off. That usually helps with your with uh, with your sound if you have your camera off because you're not pulling all your resources for the video too. So turn so see unmute yourself and see if that if that's better. You talking? Will, are you on your phone or the computer? You might need to drop off and come back in. Okay. Okay, Sandra, no problem. Okay, so I'm gonna go with my what I was saying about verse 21 for me. When it snows, she has no fear. So I wrote, she is a planner. When it snows, the pick seasons have changed. In the midst of the snow, storm is not the time to put the salt out will are you back yes i think i'm back can you hear me yes okay okay is that better mm -hmm, that's good okay okay so probably just stay off camera so that it doesn't slow you down when you're talking all right we'll do we'll do that Okay, so we're still on verse 21, and I was just reading what I had wrote for that uh, a few weeks back. So I said, she is a planner. When it snows, depicts seasons have changed. In the midst of the snowstorm is not the time to put the salt out. Knowledge of the snow of the storm coming requires planning so that you can be prepared. She has no fear because she has planned. She prepared for life's curveballs. She does not need the weatherman to tell her to go to Sam's before heading home because she's already has the essentials in place. And I had already said this, but a quick Burlington coat factory run is not needed because she had her family in Scarlet. Not just a good coat for the winter, but it's nice too. She is prepared. Would you say that you are a checklist person thinking ahead or reactionary person making the list as you go? Is one way better than the other? Hey, why or why not? Remember to hit up when I find my keys. Oh. I so, consider myself a planner. Uh huh. I always shop off season, especially mm -hmm. for um for clothing and stuff like that. Mm hmm. Oh, my job today is to hold on. You're all right. Okay. Anybody else? What y'all think? I would also say that I'm a uh, oh that I'm a planner as well. Um, mm -hmm. Even down to when vacation time comes and it should be relaxing, I plan out activities, itinerary, the whole shebang. I'm I'm just a planner, and I also um, always go to worst case scenario and try to prepare for that as well. So. All right, Isidore Barton, get out my head. <laughs> I would chill um, 
even for vacations, I try to, I might not stick to the schedule, but I'm going to try to give like, um, like activities and stuff for the family to do, like even for breakfast, because if somebody is picky, if we're doing a family one, it's like, okay, you can go here for breakfast or you can go here. It's, I think I overwork myself and my kids be like, mom, it's, we on vacation, just go, just, just go with the flow. And I'm, I'm like, okay, I just want everybody to know where, where things are at, you know. Mm-hmm. And I even will do a book, but you know, oh, like now the family's going to Disney and it's just all the ladies in the, um, and me and Dolores, my sister and her daughter, my mom and my other sister, cause she has a <laughs> voice. And I done went on there and reserved dinners and everything. If I have to cancel them, I cancel. But, you know, whew, I think I need to just learn how to don't plan everything and just. <laughs> now, I am an advocate of when I go somewhere new, I don't want to. I'm not going to eat at Red Lobster. Like, I'm not going to do anything that I could do where we live. Like, I want to experience the culture. I want to eat something that I would never normally get, go to places that that place is known for. I do want to experience, because I feel like you're wasting time if you don't do, if you just go do the stuff you would have done at the house. But one day, that first day, I don't want to do nothing. Like, I I just want to rest and get into the, you know, whatever, wherever we are. I just want to be, I just want to be. And also, when I do make a schedule, I'm not going to stick to it like it's, you know, but if I tell Isadora Barton, this is what we're going to do on this day, this day, this day, then we have to do that. Like he can't, his whole mind, just like my mouth was ready for so-and-so because I told him we was having something certain, something for dinner. Child, don't let me be out of one ingredient and now I got to go to the store because I done already said it. Because if he get home and that ain't what it is, it's just like, Oh, well, it's good, but you have my mouth ready for so and so and so. I'm like, Lord have mercy. He can't even function. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I, I like to be a little more loose once I'm on vacation. But yeah, I try to plan for it. And I just think that's another Proverbs 31 woman trait that most of us, you know, most of us have. Like we we try to stay on top of things and be proactive as opposed to reactive. What are we going to say, Edna? Oh, uh, yeah, I agree with you and Lisa. Uh, I am a planner, and but I've noticed that, you know, if, if I have to change those plans, that throws Bill off. So I don't share the plans. I have the plan, and then when he needs to know, that's when I tell him, okay, yeah, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And so I also want to become more spontaneous, you know, like leave room for um, spontaneity, you know, and not have every little detail planned. So working on that. (laughs) Yes, child, when I, the, uh, yes, when we went on our little anniversary staycation, you know, we was, I had all that planned, but I didn't tell him until we was on our way to the next thing, you know, when we went to, I was going to do that, um, go to this place where you can take selfies they got all those the selfie room and uh so we ended up at forest park because it didn't open till three so i said well let's go to forest park okay so we walked around took pictures and stuff so then uh i said well let's go to this place i had already booked for today the selfie room well we done already took about 80 pictures i said but this was scheduled and we are going to take some pictures with some different backgrounds okay so he was being amiable on our anniversary. Uh, Sonda said in the comments, because she's at work, um, I have, oh, she is prepared and have everything she needs for any time. When it's cold, she has everything her family needs, meaning she is proactive on everything to meet the family need on whatever they need. Yes, so, you know, that Proverbs 31 woman, she's on it for sure. So let's move to verse 22. Somebody read verse 22. I'll pull it up on the screen. You can pick any version. She maketh herself covering a tapestry, her clothing, 
is silk and purple. That's the King James version. Awesome. And so Dagny, yeah. On on my, I, well, it's clear now. Cause I was getting ready to say on my screen, I couldn't see anything. Just looked like a bunch of Chinese writing or something. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Hmm. It, it, it cleared that. up just as you turned it off. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. So here this woman got all these riches and lands and vineyards and carrying on and she making bad sprays too. That's a bad girl, right? That makes me think about Deborah and Ann. You know how they can just take anything and make, I mean, anything and just make mm -hmm. it a craft and done made yeah. it just something glorious, you know, stuff you just got laying around the house. But that's a craftsman. I am not crafty like that by no means. Mm -hmm. I will go buy it. I cannot make it. <laughs> now, I, like I always tell stuff. people when we doing crafting or we making um, vision boards and they cutting out all these little intricate things. I'm like, my hands are too big for all that with them <laughs> scissors and stuff. I can't even do it. Um, this is what I wrote for verse 22. She is a craftsman and she is prosperous. This Proverbs 31 woman literally is in the garment business. So she uses her expertise in the industry. She is she is in to also benefit her home. She makes coverings for her bed, even though, even though she has the means to just go to bed, bath and beyond. She is clothed in fine linen and purple to indicate she is not walking out her doors looking nothing but her best. Now let, now let me drop this here. Her best was fine lemon, linen and purple and she was clearly able to afford that. What is your finest linen? that is in your means. Are you upside down in your closet trying to keep up with his, with her, her, or her? My aunt once told me that a few staple quality pieces that can mix and match well go a long way. You can slay without wrecking your pay. That's what the mm -hmm. word mean with that particular um, verse. So this is what I wanted to say about that now that's current. Y'all saw the video that Monique made about the uh, women in the airport. And now, you know, now when when uh, when Monique was talking about boycotting Netflix and stuff, I was like, all right, Monique, now you need to settle down. But I didn't think nothing was wrong with what she said in that video to, uh, to women because they do look trifling. Now I'd have been in the airport a couple of times, literal pajamas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like she said, not just the airport, and I live by Walmart, and that's a common occurrence that women come in there in house shoes, slippers, pajama pants. I mean, it's, it, and it, I don't know, it, it's almost like it is not, we don't, we don't see it as being taken aback anymore because it's right. so prevalent. Right. But, it's like the boys with the sagging pants. It's like yeah. the same little thing, right? Yeah. But I also saw commentary on there about what she said, criticizing her, like, like yeah, this. that's what I'm saying. Like people are really going on, going on and on. I thought her tone was good. Yeah. I didn't think she was condescending, like she, because she had the means to come out some kind of way. It's yeah. true. You don't need to come out the house looking like that, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And it 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 has come to the point for me. <laughs> My issue is when I see people dress like that, mm -hmm. I immediately, this is Neva's brain. Now y'all take mm -hmm. it for what it's worth. Neva's brain say, if you come out the house looking like that, you have washed nothing. <laughs> your upper, your, butt, your bottom, your mouth, your lower. And so there is just, a, there is just an element of fuck for me. I'm like, you just look nasty. You look like you stink. And Ooh, Jesus. grosses me out. And these, these whole bunny things. I want, I want to, I was in Walmart one day. And I know somebody probably going to turn around and cuss me out. Because sometimes I just have to take a picture. I'm like, ain't nobody going to believe me. So I can take a picture. I, I just want to do a TikTok on snatching bonnets off people's heads. 
it, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And we oh. always talk about it. We always want to say how other nationalities feel about us. I don't want you in my place of business like that. You couldn't come work for me looking yeah. like that. You and the and the house shoes and walking on the back of shoes. I think it is horrible. It's and awful. Monique got a whole lot of issues of her own. God bless her. But she was right on point. Yes, she, she was. Right on. And Monique she was right a thumbs on. up on that one. I'm right. like, thank God somebody that has the ability to get to a group of people. Yeah, you you want to uh, be a queen and have people calling you a queen. What queen walks around looking like you look? That's mm -hmm. ridiculous. So I, I don't I don't know what all the backlash is. Now I did. I just think it's because it's Monique. I just think yeah. if, if Angela Bassett had said the same thing, it would have been celebrated. Or oh, if Michelle yeah. Obama said the same thing, it'd have been celebrated. It's just because mm -hmm. it's Monique. Yeah, Viola, Viola Davis, somebody with credibility. Right, right. I, I think anytime someone comes out and tries to critique us or call us out on something as a people, we get very defensive quickly on social media. We don't take it in, even if it's from one of our own. Right. We, we're not good at just, you know, receiving no. something and, you know, if they're right, they're right. You know, we get right defensive really quickly so I think I agree with you part of it is because it was Monique but I think a, another part it didn't matter who it wouldn't matter who True. there still would have been some some mm -hmm. people just like you know being upset about them saying yeah. it yeah. but we do we get defensive we can't take criticism yeah. it's ridiculous I just don't understand it I don't you know when it started that mm -hmm. we can't take criticism well we don't want nobody say nothing to our kids and they started back, remember back in the day, mm -hmm. if you got in trouble, you can get a whooping. Cause I remember this happened to me, a whooping from the, that block, the end of the block where it started all the way till you got home. When you got home, you still better not say you got a whooping cause now you can right get another whooping because the neighbors had to take time out to beat your little behind for, cause right. you wasn't listening. <laughs> yes. Nowadays, if you say something to somebody's kid, oh my God, it's the right. end of the world. Don't you? Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. That's true. And that's where it started because nobody wants to be told nothing. When you can't tell a child that they nose is running and sit yourself down, you can't was, pay a bill, but you two and three years old. And, mm -mm. I was, that's where it started. I was in Sam's. You know how you stop and show them your card. Mm -hmm. Behind me was a family. It had to be seven of them, y'all. There were two kids in the cart, and everybody had on their pajamas. Mm. Everybody. As I'm walking through the store, I keep running into them, and I promise you, I did everything possible to stay away from them just because I'm black. I don't want y'all to think they with me. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 I got me some steps in and say, I understand that. Gotta get away. <laughs> mm -hmm. So get ready to check out y'all. Yeah. In the self check lanes, they were the only people in their self check lane. And I, I went and got in a line with four people behind. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be and they like and so they they are very adamant about performing yeah all of the negative things that people say about our race yeah so you have some people that that's all they see of us mm -hmm. and that's why they think all of us act yep. like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Girl, I told you I wasn't buying it. You better get that S O T out of this. And I'm like, really, really. I mean, cussing, hollering at the kid. Nobody's okay. So the ones that didn't have on the bonnets, their hair wasn't clean, wasn't cold. Everybody looked like they just got out the field from picking cotton or something. Hair just stuck up all over their head. Mm -mm. Why do we do that? But the white man treating me wrong. 
Right. Right. Oh, okay. But yeah. God forbid, like we've saying, God forbid somebody say something, you yeah. know. Yeah. It's it's crazy. So but that's but also I was just looking at this documentary and it was talking about um uh music and clubs back in the day and how black people used to would not come out the house yeah. and not have on a dress some pumps you see what i'm saying like would just be going to the grocery store yeah. you know my uncles and them they said that's all they had was button down shirts uh or nice uh if they right. if it was casual it was mm -hmm. like a polo you know mm -hmm. and stuff and so uh you know they weren't going to wear just no t-shirt and jeans and the t-shirt mm -hmm. wasn't even tucked in you know that's what they they always came out like that so we come from that right so what switched up to make us make this like this is now i don't get it i do not but those are our current events <laughs> we will go back <laughs> to the scriptures and see what the lord is saying to us through the proverbs 31 1 because the what god is saying is that we set the standard right and for we need our to home, bring the price how we right and when we see these women out here like this these young girls somebody who we can influence or what have you because mm -hmm. god forbid we walk up on somebody and say that's not gonna work mm -hmm. but <laughs> these ones we in relationship with to be able to say that sis don't mm -hmm. do that now, do you need me to take you to dress for success and get something different? Is it that you don't have? Or, mm -hmm. or is it that you don't, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what to pick out of your closet, you know? Because mm -hmm. it's not that they don't have. I don't believe that. They just choose not to buy they the... They choose uh, to, right. They, in they other prefer words, to buy the floozy stuff. Right. Or just in your pajamas, like Nelly said, you ain't watched nothing. You just uh -uh. rolled out the bed and came out. Yeah. That's saying that you don't care about representing yourself in all places. You you gonna be smelling good, looking good from head to toe when you go to the club tonight. Mm -hmm. But this right. this Sam's trip didn't mean anything to you. To you. Mm. Anyway, mm. we don't spend enough on that. Okay, verse twenty three. Her husband is respected at the city gates, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. So what I wrote for verse twenty three was. <clears throat> She is supporting and speaks well of her covering because, re again, remember, this isn't just married Proverbs 31 women talking about the husband, that I'm also just making the position that it is your covering as well as a, pro a single Proverbs 31 woman. So, um, so you're speaking well of your covering. This compliment to the man speaks to how he is perceived as a covering by his peers. If the woman is married, the covering is her husband. Speaking well of either is key to his respect on the block at the city gate. Are you speaking well of your covering in the home among your children? Are you speaking well of your covering on social media? My great grandmother told me that I didn't have anything good to say to keep my mouth shut. In this regard, esteeming your husband is really esteeming yourself as well. Can you recall a time when the words of encouragement and support from you made all the difference in your husband or, uh, or as I was saying, or your covering? Um, I, I'm such a fan of this because I, I feel like the way that we represent, um, I'm going to go back to like for your husband, you know, like uh, uh, even if we were arguing, we are not, but even if we were, I would never be on social media. Just, and I don't understand why people do that. I mean, I don't even get that. My cousin will lay her husband out on her Facebook page and then be back in love. You see what I'm saying? And, but now, 10 people mad at him because of what you posted last week. They ain't got over it yet, you know? And so, but I think this also covers um, speaking well of your church, speaking well of your uh, bishop or pastor, what have you, in the marketplace, because that then also reflects on me, right? I was, uh, Pastor David Hawkins posted the other day something about, he used to talk about pastors until he became one. 
he had so much to say before he was a pastor about what they should and shouldn't do and had so much opinion and whatnot until he became one, you know? And so, um, and so I just wanted to throw that piece in there that, you know, I think it's, I think it goes both ways that when it's, when, when it's a reflection of you and your spouse, you know, that's why in the family, uh, even when I was married, my son's father, when I was married to my ex-husband, I never talked about him bad in front of my son. My son's opinion of him, and thank God, is always have been based on what Robert did or did not do. And so now that they're in this position that they are in now where they don't have a relationship, he and I, my son, still are like this because he knows I didn't have nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? And that that and if I had always been laying him out, then somehow them not having the relationship now might have been a little bit my fault. But no, everything that 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 uh, opinion he had of him came from his own father. And so um, what you guys think? I, I did the same thing, Dagny, mm -hmm. with my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. Oh, there, there was a plethora. Of information yeah, I, <laughs> I could have given, but because I did not meet my father until I was 13 mm -hmm. years old, mm -hmm. and so that was always a discord between me and my mother because yeah. I don't think anybody has the right mm -hmm. if a father is not abusive or doing just real inappropriate things. I don't think any woman has a right based on how you feel. That's to right. Keep a child from a child. Mm -hmm. That's from, right. From, from a father. That's, That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and even based totally on agree. even based mm -hmm. on, on money. Mm -hmm. If that was the yep. case, mine wouldn't have never seen her daddy. So mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. I stayed out of that. Mm -hmm. And I encouraged. Right. Mm -hmm. When can I when can I pick up? She's at my mother's house mostly every day. Mm -hmm. pick up. Whenever yeah. you got mm -hmm. carte blanche, you can pick up whenever you want to. So I stayed out of it and yeah. I kept trying to encourage her yes. and uplift her about it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you know, I, I here I'm lying for him mm -hmm. right, to help her. So it got to a point. I just want to ask you all, because maybe I don't know. When do we celebrate Jesus's birthday? When is Jesus' birthday? December 25th. Right. She wouldn't get her Christmas stuff till April and May. <laughs> and okay. I would tell him, that's a child. You right. can go spend $10 <laughs> right. at the dollar store. And that'll right. be the only thing she played with till that February. Mm -hmm. Okay? So mm -hmm. she didn't get it. But I'm so glad I stayed out of it because the <laughs> older she got, she started well, he, and next, he said he was coming. Yeah. Well, now he's not answering the phone. Yeah. Well, yeah. I told him I needed fifty dollars. Well, so she figured it out all by herself. That's and right. even <laughs> when she did, I wasn't in there with him. Girl, yeah, I've been wanting to tell you, but exactly. Uh -uh. Pray for him, mm -hmm. Come, and I'll even ask when the last time you talked to your dad. Mm -hmm. Call him have a relationship with them because without him you still wouldn't have been here been here right, right. Mm -hmm. so i i have an issue with women that do that i really really right. do i guess because i live through it i don't think anybody should take a father away unless mm -hmm. it's you know right a, a i agree with you totally so. when i say yeah. i agree with you totally because when i say i'm i'm probably like you need, but I could have told a whole big mess of a story and it would have been true. But at the end of the day, when you talk about their father, that's part of them. And yeah. I did not want to tear them down because then they like, do she feel the same way about me? And because right. I had a son, I really was Larry so that I will never say you're acting like your dad. Right. Like my son is 22, just graduated from college. He go visit his father in the summertime and all that. Do you know at 22, he still took that trip, came back still mad like he normally come back. But guess what me and his sister say? 
You do it to yourself. But we're not going to talk about you doing it because at least you got some type of relationship right. with them. Right, right. So right. we say if something ever happened to your dad, you got some memories. <laughs> Right. But at 22, he still got on that plane and spent two weeks with that man. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> that's awful. Man, when I say I got laughing, because <laughs> <laughs> I said to him, oh, is he going to be 15? You require him still coming for two weeks. <laughs> but you know what? You did your part, though, Lisa. And that was Proverbs 31 right there. You see what I'm saying? When, when the relationship between you two didn't work, you didn't make that break um, break mm -hmm. the family. And right. and we're, and and uh, what's the scripture that says? In as much as it lies within you, yes. right, mm -hmm. live at peace among all men. Because <laughs> the thing is that, and that's what when we would go home and stuff, and my family would be trying to lay Robert out. Girl, I would uh -uh. I would tell Cece go outside and play, and then I would correct them. Correct them. Do uh -huh. not. Talk, talk about, about that man him. in front of his child. And because. I don't want to hear it either because nothing y'all talking about, I lived it. Y'all ain't been in my house. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. Do you see me? I'm doing fine. You know. Yeah, oh my, Dagny, that's what I constantly tell them. Stop laying the man out for something he did years ago. He cannot do anything today to make it better. I said, right. and guess what? I don't want him. <laughs> <laughs> happy for him let's pray that he keeps it together over there right <laughs> i promise you but, yeah. it, but that's proverbs 31 y'all we we will take the the licking but what i thought was interesting in the scripture though is that prop this is the proverbs 31 scripture but in these it's talking about that her husband is respected in the city gates. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That something she is doing, doing. Mm -hmm. has also esteemed him. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Uh, because, I mean, that, that thing just blows me. But that's yeah. what that we carry so much weight and so much mm -hmm. power that that's how oh. that is, you know. And that's it's, why it's so upsetting when we leave out our house not looking like the women we supposed to be right right because anything other than women, that mm -hmm. anything other than that right it's mm -hmm. not the standard but how can you to me it's after you done i'm like even now after you done took yourself a nice shower how can you leave out what what those pajamas is, but like Nima said, she ain't took no shower she ain't took no shower, the they they took no shower the yet the, the what <laughs> Nothing. You, can. <laughs> you and, and you know what, Lisa? Lisa, I never thought about it just how you said it. The, the, the funk is there because now, now you have totally explained my hypothesis. <laughs> You're not going to take no shower and put on no funky okay. sleep clothes. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. Uh oh, because it, it doesn't it just it just don't make sense. Don't make sense. Don't make sense. Mm. <laughs> Ooh wee. Sad. Crazy. Okay, verse twenty four. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. In verse twenty, this is what I wrote. In verse twenty two, she clothed herself, her home, and her family. She can do that because she has a side hustle or another stream of income. She makes the garments, sell the garments, and has merchants that only come to her for the sashes. Sometimes as a modern day Proverbs 31 woman, we are not necessarily fulfilling our purpose on the nine to five. It may be a side hustle that's going to fuel that passion or calling. Let that nine to five fund your five to nine so that you can possibly flip a switch one day. And so that's what I was just talking about, how her, some of that that she was doing was her nine to five, right? Mm -hmm. Other of that that she was doing was her side hustle, if you will, in common, in modern day language. And so sometimes it's your, comp, it's your side hustle that may fuel your passion, right? And, but other times it's your nine to five that does that. And so what I love about this is, is that 
that's what she's known for. You know what I'm saying? Like the merchants only get the sashes from her. That's like her, her, her niche, if you will. And so it's so important that we find our niche as Proverbs 31 women, uh, Edna yoga, that's, uh, that's Edna's niche. You see what I'm saying? Like she has brought that to us in a way that is accessible to us, you know, as opposed to, we probably wouldn't be going to a yoga studio a couple of times a week, but because of Edna's faithfulness and bringing it to, uh, uh, to zoom or what have you, you know, uh, there are those of us who have tapped into, uh, to yoga, you know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's Edna's niche. So what do you guys think about that? That, um, how our purpose makes us even more effective Proverbs 31 women or whatever else you got out of verse 22. I'm sorry, 24. Not everyone at it, once. Uh, she makes belted linen garments and sashes to sell to the merchants. To me, that's saying that it was not beneath her to do that. You know, because it seemed like from her status and how she dressed and all of this, some people would think maybe that's too, she's too high and mighty or too important to be doing that. But because perhaps that was her gift in, in the way she did it, yeah, you, you, you can bless other people by actually doing your gift yeah, and, and really enjoying it. So it's not, not like that was a, uh, too low for her because of the status she was at you you should you should enjoy your gifts and 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 sharing your gifts at whatever station you are in life agreed yeah that's what that kind of what i was going to say uh too that um it sounds like this is her passion and she loves <laughs> to do it uh, so we're looking at it like, wow, look at all everything she's doing. But because she, it is what she likes to do, you know, it's enjoyment for her. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Deborah and Ann, uh, th they love what they're doing. They love yeah. to craft. Uh, mm -hmm. Deborah loves to plan activities and events mm -hmm. and parties. That's her passion. It seems like, you know, we look at it like, Ooh, you're doing a whole lot, but that's what she likes to do. Mm -hmm. Agni, uh, her uh, gift is administration. So even though she, that's her job, she also has, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a business where, you know, mm -hmm. this, this is what she does and it's her passion. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm, when Nivia said that, I thought, okay, that's what, that's what that is. It's, it's, we're, they're using, uh, mm -hmm. her occupation, but it's also right. a passion. Right. That's good. Yeah. That is good. Which is which is probably very easy for them, enjoyable and fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Now, Neva and Crafts, <laughs> as much as I need some greenery in my bank account, <laughs> you could tell me, Neva, uh eighty five thousand dollars. You're gonna do crafts all day. You know what? I'll just keep looking. I can't do it. I can't cut a straight line. I don't enjoy gluing. I pumped all of that in kindergarten. And <laughs> I am just not a craftsman. Okay. <laughs> now, if you're at an event and you need somebody to place things on the table, you place one and I can follow directions. I can mm -hmm. do it. I'm not gluing. I'm not stapling mm -hmm. and tying a bow. You would probably just go on and hit me in the eye. You'd be like, Neva, what is that? Just can't do it because I'm not interested in that. Okay. And, and mm -hmm. I am on, there's a point in my life when I'm around so many craftsy people. Mm -hmm. I went off one day. I said, you know what? I will not continue to apologize to you people just because I don't like this. 
It's not <laughs> some, why does it have to be something wrong with me? It could be something wrong with y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> now, I know, I know right. one thing that I love to do is, like, the yard, my husband can't, you know, after the grass, like now, our grass is one of the best looking yards on the block is because I used to wake up after MTM, the lawn care will come out here and put the fertilizer and all that. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. water that grass, then later, later on that night, go back out there. And so, and then like I do all my own landscaping and all that, and I do my vegetable garden. That I love doing that. Like when everybody was um, posting on Facebook, they went to um, Eckers and did a strawberry picking. My daughter said, "Oh, we just went to the backyard and picked off the moms." Wow, uh -huh. that's, that's, right. that's beautiful. That's but beautiful. I love, I love that. Stuff. But I love doing stuff like that. And my husband now, after that grass is done, you want to know who they give all the credit to? All the neighbors. <laughs> They say, man, your grass looks so good. You take great pride in that. <laughs> and what I do, I don't say, oh. I say, oh, he sure does. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Proverbs 31 woman. I say, he sure does. Because the summer before, when our grass got burned, I would, mm -hmm. I would go out the front of that house and almost cry. I said, never again will we have the worst grass on the block. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was in his mind. He was like, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, Lisa, that's, 23. that's verse 23. <laughs> I know, right? He praised in the city gates. Didn't have nothing to do with that grass. <laughs> I said to myself, I, was, I said, I knew they used to see me out in this front with my garden boots on, my hat and everything at five in the morning. And then again at seven when the sun go down, but that's okay. <laughs> Oh, guys. Okay, guys, this is our last verse. 25, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. And I said about her for this verse, she is magnetic. I don't have to yeah. restate the obvious. The fine linen is what others see, but within mm -hmm. is strength and dignity that others experience. When you show up clothed <clears throat> in mm -hmm. strength and dignity, you can mm -hmm. change the atmosphere. Then mm -hmm. after she shows up and sits at the table, her sense of humor and outlook on the situations that come up draw people even closer to her. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard that this, there's just something about you? This is it. It's mm -hmm. the parts that allow your best self to show up. Mm -hmm. And this just brings our whole thing back full circle. That when you step out and you're looking good, that's the thing that turns people ahead. But when mm -hmm. you open your mouth, mm. when that's when what that strength and dignity that comes mm -hmm. out, you see what I'm saying? And that's what drives us crazy when we see these young girls or what mm -hmm. have you dressed the opposite of that. Because mm -hmm. the, the story that is telling about them, it may be false. They may be the sweetest folks. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But this representation it's telling mm. me that you don't care. It's yeah. telling me that you know what I'm saying, and that but the but by the Proverbs 31 woman and the women we strive to be when we come out looking our the best that we can. You see what I'm saying, and taking pride in that. But when you show up with that strength and dignity, that's from the mm -hmm. end, and that's the thing that that changes people's lives. And I just love it, love it, love it. Mm -hmm. I think about verse 25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Hey, uh, while we were talking, I was looking up uh, about this wearing the pajamas, and <laughs> it, is, it is a trend. <laughs> it is. But it's you, you have to go and buy the pajamas that you know you to wear. You don't just wear anything. You know the the women in these pictures, uh, the clothing are made like pajamas. You know, but. It's not the same pajamas they're sleeping in. Right. Child, when, you, when, you, when you can't buy, you try to improvise. And that's what that's probably what we're seeing is, you know, they said pajamas, so they're just wearing anything. Right. But it's these pajamas that this lady have on probably costs, you know, some money. 
I tell you. But isn't it great that, you know, all of these things just come full circle, you know, because at the end of the day, how she shows up that strength and that dignity mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? again another attribute that she is remembered for in this in this pericope of verse i love it okay we only have two minutes so prayer <laughs> requests and praise reports i have a praise report all right willa this is willa um and this is this is concerning my job. It's just something that happened recently. Um, they had asked me to fill in for a certain position. Mm-hmm. And so um, I didn't know this, or I kind of, I wasn't sure about this, but one gentleman on, on the job, he said, you ought to ask them to go ahead and promote you to, uh, so you can get the money to, to, so that you can get paid for what you're actually doing. So I remember in my, in my mind, the first thing was I was just scared to ask, but I just went forward and I stepped out on faith and I said, I'm just going to ask for it. And uh, my supervisor, he actually called me and apologized to me for not putting me in for it. So I was just thankful for that. And that was a little small blessing that, that we received that, um, you know, and my husband, he's working up in Chicago now, so there's a lot of separation and it's, it's just, it was just a blessing. But my first thought is that I was just afraid. And right. I said, no, I'm going to get past that. I'm just going to go forward in faith. I'm going right. to pray on it. And I felt led to do it. And I, I asked my supervisor and he, like I say, he called me and apologized to me right away for not putting me in for that. So that's my little praise report. That's good. That's good. Because yeah. he recognized your worth. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. That's good. Amen. Who else? Praise report, prayer request. Continue to order my steps and Keep my ears, heart, mind open to receive. Amen. Okay, ladies, let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We honor you. We love you, Lord. God, we thank you for each and every blessing that you have bestowed upon us, oh God. We thank you for even the obstacles that we are overcoming, Lord God, because of your strength, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that uh, we had taken this time um, to set aside to remember the Proverbs 31 women that are in, that's inside of each and every one of us, Lord God. God, we thank you for equipping us, Lord God, to do all the things that are within our hands to do, Father God. I thank you for each one of these women, Lord God, that have assembled here, those that could not be here today that will listen to this later, Father God. I ask that you bless their homes, Lord God, um, 50, 100-fold, Lord God. I thank you uh, for Neva, God. I thank you for... um, Uh, just continuing, Lord God, to be Jehovah Jireh, Lord God, continuing, Lord God, to to lead God and direct her, Father God, and that you are uh, helping her put one foot in front of the other, Lord God, ordered steps, Father God, ordered steps, Lord God, toward your purpose and your plan, Lord God. Jeremiah 29 11 says that you know the plans that you have for her plans to give her hope and a future father God and so we thank you for that hope and we thank you for her future father God and ask that you would continue to keep her her ears mind and spirit open to the things that you have for her Lord God God I thank you for Willa I thank you for um uh her ability to uh speak up for herself father god and thank you for her supervisor coming back around to recognize his lord god uh, mistake in putting her in for a a promotion she deserved father god so god i thank you for being jehovah jireh lord god even in that situation father god that what what you have for willa is for willa and that no man or supervisor was gonna have to 
put her in for what you have for her, Father God, that you're going to just make a way. Lord God, I ask that you would bless her marriage, Lord God, and uh, continue to, uh, Lord God, build them up even in this distance, Lord God, as, as uh, he is working uh, in another city, Lord God. So I lift them up before you, God, and ask that you would make the time that they are together, Lord God, fruitful, Lord God. And um, we thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus. God, I lift up everyone that's on this call and ask that you would just be with us and would be with each household, Father God. Make it more blessed than how we left it on this morning. And God, we thank you and we honor you. We love you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Love you, Amen. Amen. Love you. Love you. Love you. Be safe. Have a good See you one. next week. Have a good you week. Good week. Good week. Good week. Good week. Good week. Good week. Next week. Edna, I'm gonna make one of your yoga classes one of these Tuesdays or Thursday. Okay. So I'm gonna try. <laughs> okay. I always, I always have something to do on those days. I know. <laughs> Six thirty is you know a time when a lot of people are you know getting ready to eat, but yeah. You know, that, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know you can eat later or earlier. <laughs> hey, Edna, Edna, you oh, said okay. the classes are at six thirty. 6.30 on, on Tuesday, Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. And how much are they? It's $10. Per dollars. class. Per class, right. Okay. Yeah. I, wanna, I want to... I want to say it's chair yoga and then uh, Thursday is, is floor yoga. Say what now? Tuesday is chair yoga, but Thursday is floor yoga. So you probably want to come on Tuesday for chair Tuesday. yoga. Tuesday. Okay. okay. And will you, what do I do? You, you send me a link. Okay. I'm I get this chapter. What? It's a Zoom, and so I can put you on her mailing list and uh, send it to you so you can get the link for the Zoom. It's the same okay. link. So I'll send it to you for next week. Okay, and then I cash out you the $10. Mm -hmm. before she has okay. Okay, well, I'll come next Tuesday. I'll come next Tuesday. Okay. Okay, great. Well, I'll be there. I'll see you then. All righty. Okay. All right, Neva. So we'll get together um, to come up with something to, so we can get together. Okay. Uh, Mondays are my best day. So you want to just set what, something up for Monday now? Uh, Monday. What time? Let's see. Monday. Oh, it's not the the fourteenth. Is a. No, it's Monday. Is the seventh. Seventh. Yeah. And right now. Yeah. I have uh, 12.30, but other than that, I'm open. You tell me what time. You want me to come there, or are we going to do it on the Zoom? or? Oh, we can just Zoom. I'm not at work. I'll be at home. Okay. We can Zoom. Is that good? Oh, we you want to just meet somewhere for lunch or something? Let's meet for lunch. Okay. I need so to then, um, the face. Then let's do... Uh, ten thirty. Let's do brunch, and let's go to uh, what's on this side. You want to do first watch over in Shiloh? Never heard of it. What are you talking about? It's like the egg and I. Did you ever go to the egg and I? I did. That it's it's in the same place as egg and I, and they basically got the same type of menu. Okay, but it's first watch. And what time? 10 30. 10 30 all righty all right i'm put i'll send you a calendar thing okay okay thank you all right love you sis love you too have a good one you too bye bye bye